Hey folks, uh, we're going to use our, our methods to figure out uh, voltage, aka electric potential, um, and we're going to use that use one of the two methods we developed in the last video uh, to figure out the the voltage created by a solid ball of charge. Um, so imagine this is uh, made of plastic or something. It's an insulating material, and you put a total charge Q within distributed throughout the ball, and the ball has a radius big R. And uh, we're going to figure out the voltage at different locations, A, B, C, and D. A being anywhere outside the ball, B being at the surface of the ball, C being anywhere inside the ball, and D being the dead center of the ball. So our first goal here, first of all, if you need to pause the video for a sec and copy that down, please do so. All right, so our first goal here is to figure out, well, in order to find voltage, I got to figure out which method to use, method one or method two. So do we either know the electric field and we can find change in voltage, or do we consider our ball a bunch of point charges and try to write voltage or voltage in terms of radius, okay? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if I try to do method two, and let's say I'm looking at the voltage of point A, I'm trying to figure out like how I would write all the different points in this ball as functions of radius, because you'd have different radii to different points and different angles and everything to point A. And probably it could be done, uh, but it would be really, really, really hard to use method two, okay? So we're going to use method one. Uh, we need to know the electric field both inside and outside of the ball. And we learned how to do that in the previous chapter using Gauss's law. Now, I'm not going to rehash all of using Gauss's law. I will remind you, though, of the results. Okay. So if you are outside this ball of charge, um, the electric field, it's like a point charge. It's just kq over r squared. Okay. And you might recall, hopefully, that if you're inside the ball, the uh, electric field is kq little r over the radius of the ball cubed. Okay. So again, if you forget how to do that, um, look back at your previous chapter and, and we used Gauss's law to figure those out. So because we know the electric field everywhere in the space, both outside and inside the ball, we're going to use these to we're going to use these with method one here to figure out the change in voltage. So we're going to use change in voltage in general is uh, negative the integral of E dot D. And in this case, instead of saying ds, we're going to say dr because we're varying a radius. Okay. Now, um, what do we do here? Okay. Well, we first, when we use delta v, we have to have a place to start. So this is v um, at a minus v at some point equals negative the integral of e. Now we're going to start with the outside. Okay. So we're going to have kq over r squared dot dr, okay? Now, um, what's the, oh, and then we're going to go from somewhere to a. Now, the somewhere, okay, the somewhere is, well, where do we know the voltage for sure? Well, we know that the voltage at infinity, if you get really, 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 really far away from the ball, the voltage it creates is roughly zero. So we're going to start at infinity, okay, and then we're going to integrate our way to A. Now, a quick recollection here. What we're talking about is we have electric field lines pointing outward from this ball, okay, and we are going to work our way in. Now, we are going uphill. We're going against the field, so we're going to gain voltage. So our voltage at way off here in infinity is zero, so our voltage at A should be some positive value. Okay, so um, what do we get here? Well, um, the voltage at A minus the voltage at infinity, which we know to be zero, is negative the integral from zero, oh, I'm sorry, from infinity, well, that would have been totally wrong, <laughs> from infinity to A, um, of kq over r squared dot dr, okay? Now, um, there's a couple negatives in here. Your electric field is outward. We're moving inward. So our dr is actually a negative dr, 
but then we're dotting that negative dr with the electric field, and those are in opposite directions, so the second negative there. So it turns out within this whole thing, there's two negatives. Well, they're going to cancel, so we can just leave this as it is. But we still have one negative out here that we have to be aware of. All right, so then we got VA minus zero equals, uh, I'm going to pull out everything that's a constant. So we got negative KQ. Well, what are we integrating? Well, we're integrating one over R squared, which is otherwise known as R to the negative two dr. And we're going from infinity to A, okay? And um, if we integrate this, we get negative KQ. Well, what's the integral of R to the negative two? Well, if you remember, recall, you're just doing your power rule here. You add one to the exponent, so it becomes r to the negative 1, and you divide by the new exponent, so negative 1. And then you're going to evaluate this from infinity to a. Okay. Uh, now, we got a negative 1 and a negative there, so those things cross off. So the voltage at a is simply kq over r evaluated from infinity to a. So you get kq over a minus kq over infinity. Well, kq over infinity is roughly zero, so you simply get kq over a. Or the voltage anywhere outside the ball is kq over r. Well, that shouldn't surprise you at all because, hello, when you're outside the ball, it's going to act like a point charge. And the voltage of a point charge is kq over r, so the voltage outside this ball is kq over r. So surprise, surprise, okay? So by the way, you are free to use that result from here on in. If you are outside of a symmetric ball of charge, the voltage outside of it will just be kq over r. Now, what about when we get to b at the surface of the ball? Well, the voltage at b would simply be, you'd plug in b here, so it'd be kq over b, okay? So no big deal there. Now, the, the hardest part of this is getting the voltage at C. How do we get the voltage at C? Okay, well, we're going to use our delta V again. So let me rewrite this. Delta V equals negative the integral of E dot dr. Okay, now the next step is the most important. It's all about limits. So as we walked our way in, so we started... We have to start somewhere that we know. Well, we know the voltage is zero at infinity, so we start there. And then we walk in. We walk in. We found the voltage anywhere outside of this thing is kq over r. The last place I know the voltage is at b. At the surface of the ball, the voltage is kq over big R. And I'll and you know, let me write that down. So this would be the same thing as kq over big R, big R being the radius of the actual ball, okay? At that point, the electric field function changes. It goes from being this to being this. So now we need a new integral using this electric field and with new limits. So the last place that we knew was the voltage at B. So we're going to do the voltage at C minus the voltage at B. That's our delta. Okay, and we're, go we're going from B because that's the last place we knew. This equals negative the integral. We're going to evaluate this from B to C. Our electric field inside the ball is kqr over r cubed. So we got our kq little r over big R cubed. And then uh, dot dr. Okay. All right. So what are we integrating here? Well, k, q, and big R cubed are all constants. You're just integrating little r. So it's a linear function. So Vc minus, now what was the voltage at B? The voltage at B was that, kq over big R. So you put that value there, kq over big R. By the way, be careful, we have little r's and big r's. The little r is where we're at, it's a variable. Big R is the radius of the ball. This is big R, that is a constant. Okay, so be careful on that. All right, so anyway, uh, this equals negative kq over big R cubed. All right, well, what's the integral of R? Well, it's R squared over 2, and I have to evaluate that from B to C, okay? All right, so we got the voltage at C, which is anywhere inside the fuzzy ball, minus kq over big R equals negative kq uh, little r squared 
over 2 big R cubed. And I'm going to plug in my C there. So this will be C squared minus negative KQ B squared, okay, over 2 big R cubed. Okay. Now, what's B? Well, that's big R. Well, what's C? Well, that's any radius that's inside the ball. So we're going to make those two quick substitutions here. So the voltage, oh, pardon me, the voltage at C, anywhere inside the fuzzy ball, minus KQ over big R equals negative KQ little r squared over 2 big R cubed. And then two minuses become a positive. Um, if you put big R in for B, you get uh, KQ over 2 big R. And you might notice that you have, we're going to put, we're going to add KQ over R to both sides. These are like terms now. And the voltage at C, that's anywhere inside the ball, equals, I'm going to write that out first. So we got KQ over 2R plus KQ over R, which is 3 KQ over 2 big R minus KQ little r squared over 2 big R cubed. That is the voltage anywhere inside of that fuzzy ball of charge for any radius little r. Uh, a quick note on this, uh, what kind of function is this whole thing? Well, the only variable is r squared, so it's a quadratic, okay? Um, and then finally, I asked you, what's the voltage at D? Well, D is the center of the ball. So that's where little r equals zero. So all you do is you say little r equals zero and voltage at point D at the center of the ball is simply 3kq over 2 big R, okay? Um, and that's your max voltage in this situation. And the last thing I'm going to do is to, another way of looking at this is we're going to graph, okay? So we're going to make two graphs. We're going to graph the electric field as a function of radius. And when we did that on, here's a point of interest, the radius of the ball. When you're inside this thing, it's a, um, a linear function. It's KQ little r over big R cubed. When you're outside, it was an inverse squared. It was KQ over little r squared. They meet at the surface of the ball. You get KQ over big R squared. That's your max electric field, okay? And then down below this, we're going to graph voltage as a, as a function of radius as well, okay? Now, the uh, same point of interest is big R, okay? Well, when we're outside this thing, it's just an inverse function. It's just KQ over R. So I'm going to write that in. Um, we'll start about there. This is an inverse function. It's KQ over R. When you're inside the ball, um, the function becomes this crazy thing here. It's a quadratic. Now, before I figure out the quadratic and the curve and all that, I know the voltage at the center of the ball is 3kq over 2r. Um, the voltage at the surface of the ball is kq over big R. So I'm going to make a note of that. So this value is kq over big R. Big R. The value at the center of the ball which would be about there, is 3 halves of that. So I'll just write it this way, 3 halves of KQ over big R. So all I have to do now is connect those two points. Now you got two choices here. You either have, it's a quadratic, it can either look like that or like that. Which one looks more appropriate, the top or the bottom one? Well, if you just look at it, it's the top one. You know, the bottom one doesn't even look right. Um, and so this function is, this crazy thing here. So 3kq over 2 big R, okay, minus, by the way, you can clearly tell I don't have this memorized. I would never suggest you memorize this. Um, we got kq little r squared over 2 big R cubed. And notice that if I plug in big R for little r into that equation, I get 3kq over 2 big R minus um, kq over 2 big R, which becomes kq over big R. Okay, so this function here 
and this function here should have the same value when the electric field function changed at big R, which they do. Okay, so way to check to see if you're doing the problem right. All right, so I know it's a lot to lot to put the handle there, right? Um, but again, it starts with do I know if I know the electric field and I know a starting point, I know a voltage somewhere. Well, in this case, at infinity, the voltage is zero. Well, then I can integrate. The problem is you can integrate when you're outside, but when you get to point B here, the surface of the ball, you have to then make a different integral, okay, because you have a new electric field function in there. So you got to be careful about that. Um, so we, we integrate outside the ball, and then we integrated inside the ball from the surface, okay? The other thing I'll just really quick run over again is in this equation here, you have a delta, so there's going to be two points. Those same two points are what you're evaluating in your integral every single time, right? So like there, for instance, and if you look here, you'll see, look at that, and you'll see at the end here, I did the same thing, right? Or I, that is the end right there. So make sure when you're integrating, it's a delta, so there are two values. In this case, like for this part of it, we knew one of them. And those are the same two locations, your, your limits for your integral. All right. So I hope that uh, example was helpful. And thank you very much.